I have a confession to make. I've been in the coffee arts for nearly 20 years. I've made tens of thousands of coffees for untold numbers of people. I still make coffee for guests on a daily basis. For the most part, I enjoy the work and the happiness that we bring to people every day. However, I've been harboring a dark secret. There's one drink that I despise making. I don't really know why. I don't even know how it evolved to this point. There's nothing inherently wrong nor offensive about this drink. It's a basic coffee and milk kind of drink. This disposition isn't driven from some pretentious third wave milk does not go with coffee kind of thing. But for some reason, every time someone orders this drink, I cringe and maybe die just a little bit inside. I've even thought of raising the price of the drink to discourage people from ordering it. But order it they do, because it's a tasty and delicious drink that's super refreshing, especially on a hot day. You may see me in the shop welcoming you with a smile and brightness in the eyes, but behind the mask might actually be a grimace. The eyes are bright, the greeting is warm and authentic, but I'm secretly wishing that I could stab myself with a fork. The thing is, this is a drink with a long and grand tradition. Coffee first came to its origin nation in 1857 by a Catholic priest from France. However, it wouldn't be until the 1920s that coffee production would really spring forward in the province of Douglas. When war came to the peninsula in the 1950s, coffee production would be disrupted for 30 years until 1986 when private enterprise was allowed again. But our drink has its origins at the Metropole Hotel in Hanoi, where French expats lived their lives to the fullest and where well-to-do locals sought to emulate their European overlords. The French, by the way, had been drinking coffee since 1669, when Turkish ambassador Suleiman Aga first introduced coffee to Louis XIV. But since Suleiman wore simple clothes and refused to bow down to the French king, he was promptly banished from court in Versailles and sent to Paris. In Paris, the intrepid Suleiman set up house where he introduced coffee drinking to French society. This was a place where waiters dressed in Ottoman style and held extravagant coffee ceremonies for society women suddenly making coffee drinking high fashion throughout Parisian society. 17 years later, Café Procopé, the oldest currently operating café in Paris, opened its doors on the Rue de la Ancienne Comédie in 1686. While the French enjoy their coffee with milk, the high heat and humidity of Southeast Asia is unwelcoming and inhospitable to dairy cows. To combat this, the French colonizers turned to condensed milk, a clarified, evaporated, sugared, and lactose-crystallized milk developed by the American Gale Borden in 1864. But unlike the French café au lait, this version with a deeper roasted coffee and condensed milk is sweeter, negating the need for sugar and making this sort of a de facto dessert in the process. All that history is nice, but it really doesn't answer why I find this drink so painful to make. Maybe it's in the process of making it, which is actually pretty simple. To make the drink, we first need to get the proper brewing device, the Fin Café. This is usually two, three, sometimes four piece stainless steel brewer that is the traditional way of preparing this coffee. There's typically a bottom plate, a brew basket, a basket screen, and a cover. You stack them and sandwich the coffee inside the basket and between the basket screen. First up, we take 20 grams of deeply roasted Arabica coffee and grind it to medium fine. It should be dark and roasty, but not to the point where you taste char. While some brands of coffee use things like chicory to compensate for the quality of their beans, I think it's best to source a quality Arabica with good body and some nice cacao notes, and not the chocolate flavoring you find in some of the brands. At the bottom of the brewing vessel, we place 30 grams of sweetened condensed milk, and while you could use a typical brand of Borden or Nestle, I think the better and more accurate flavor comes from longevity brand condensed milk. If you can find it, it's typically pricier, but I like it better. Fill the brew with water just off the boil and wait. It's not a fast brew, it's a slow brew. A seemingly infinitely long brew. Perhaps this is the part that kills me the most, the wait. It feels interminable. After you've waited a while for the first pour to brew through, you refill the brew with a second dose of hot water and wait another long and godforsaken length of time. As a barista, I'm waiting too. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Slowly, it's driving me crazy. 
the slow infinitesimal drips and the brew basket that never seems to be flowing. At this point, everything is in slow motion. I want to serve guest drinks expeditiously so everyone can be happy, but there's nothing expeditious about this coffee. It takes time, doing whatever it wants as though it is on holiday. Part of the problem is that it's an imprecise piece of equipment. The perforations aren't quite perfect, which impacts the flow rate. Then there's the compression of the coffee by the basket screen. The more you pack it down, the tighter it compresses the coffee, which impacts the flow rate. In order to develop some sense of consistency and predictability, you really have to be in tune with the fin. But even then, it still takes a lot more time than every other drink on the menu. Sometimes, when hoping for a miracle, I'll tell our guests that the drinks take quite a while to make. While it's a courtesy to let them adjust their expectations, it's also partially my way of encouraging them to choose something quicker, like a cappuccino. We'd like the Vietnamese iced coffees, please. As you can see, with the mask on, it still looks like I'm smiling. But despite my agony and misgivings, the brew does finish at some point. The coffee is richly and deeply brewed and just floats in the condensed milk. It looks pretty at this point, but to finish it, we must stir to combine the ingredients. And that's really the magic here. It's just two ingredients. Simple. It's why you need to utilize the best ingredients you can because there's nothing to hide. It has to be done right. And after you've mixed them together and poured the mixture over ice, it's magic. The deep roasted chocolatey coffee and the sweet and creamy condensed milk combine to make the perfect pairing that has been enjoyed by French, Vietnamese, and worldly citizens alike for over 120 years. This is rare coffee. Good, good.